Shua was the name of Jesus. His name was the person they're trying to attribute that fake name to is actually Yeshua, which means Joshua in English, but Yeshua in Middle East, right? This, these images are not images that I pulled out. This particular image of Yeshua, it comes from Egypt, from the church, the Coptic church in Egypt. Coptic churches existed long before Christianity even existed. And this is the image of Yeshua from uh, the Coptic church. On the right, you see Ethiopian Jews. And you see the Ethiopian Jews have been here for a very, 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 very long time. And you see that these men are actually black men. Now, what does this mean? Does it matter? Is this is this video about race and color? Actually, it isn't. It's not. It's about education. I want you to know something. I want you to learn something today because you have to understand the foolishness that's been going on on this planet for a couple thousand years. Even more than that, but at least for a couple thousand years in, in regards to Yeshua and uh, and what's and what and what um, dogma has been placed on all of our generations of children down the pipeline, which is which is ridiculously altering the way that we live on this planet and how we think, breathe, eat, sleep and everything else. So Yeshua is a Middle Eastern man, was a Middle Eastern man. And I do mean man. He was a Middle Eastern man with ties to people that weren't human and they weren't gods either. They were just advanced beings. It was interesting about Yeshua. He was a virgin birth, according to the biblical text. But if you look into some of the older apocrypha texts, you discover that Yeshua grandmother, Yeshua's grandmother, Mary's mother, was also a virgin birth. We have evidence of in vitro fertilization in ancient times to create a specific line that this guy comes out of, Yeshua. Was he a real person that existed? Yeah, because I've been to the house that he lived in, and I'm going to show it to you in a minute when he was a kid. The Ethiopian Jews is interesting as they have the Torah, they have everything. Jews have lived in Ethiopia for over 2,000 years. It's really closer to 5,000 years, to be honest with you. According to the Ethiopian tradition, one half of the population of the Jewish before Christianity was proclaimed the official religion in the fourth century. The Jews maintained their independence for over 1000 years in spite of continuous massacres, religious persecution, enslavement and forced conversions. With the help of modern Portuguese weapons, the Amhara finally conquered the Jews in 1616, enslaving, converting and killing them, known as falsas and derog a derogatory name, which meaning stranger or exile. Ethiopian Jews could no longer own land or be educated. Today, Jews number in only 25,000, less of 1%, less than 1% of the population. 85% live in Gondar province in the Semian mountains near Lake Tana. The rest live in Tigre and Wolo provinces. Ethiopian Jews are biblical pre rabbinic Jews. Pre-Rabbinic, that means before rabbis existed, they existed. Before rabbis existed, these black Jews already were here. They have the Torah, which is the written law. The Torah came from Ethiopia and then made its way into Europe when the uh, Ashkenazi Jews got their hands on it and the Khazarians, all right? But not the Talmud, which is the oral law. Their language is not Hebrew, but Gies. Their leaders are priests known as Kohanim, rather than rabbis. They, the interpretation of the law, e.g. the prohibition against mixing meat and milk. Until recently, Ethiopian Jews practiced animal sacrifice and ritual purification through immersion in water. Otherwise, their religion is the same as Judaism throughout the world, including the observance of the Sabbath and biblical uh, dietary laws. They are religious Zionists. They dream of their re a return to Zion. They call themselves Beta Israel, House of Israel, and have wanted to live in the modern state of Israel since its establishment in 1948. But they're banned from living there because they're black. So they went off and created this white uh, Jewish uh, country, this Zion, and, and left. And the black people that they got the information from on how to live this way, which I still think is not the way for a human being to live. I think that there's a much better way than this, these religious dogma. But however, 
put them, ban them from coming there to live there. You, know, you guys stay up here in that little mountain area where you where we where we you know we almost killed you off. You guys just stay over there. And so that's where where all that comes from. Jesus wasn't uh, a Christian. If you're a gamer, have you ever thought about quitting everything just to pursue gaming? Well, here's a quick hack on how. Okay, Jesus was not a Christian. Christianity didn't exist until Jesus was long gone and dead. But the practice of understanding a Christ, a Christ consciousness existed and understanding what it meant to ascend to a higher level of consciousness. They called it Christ consciousness. It's an ancient text in deep antiquity. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus, or really his name is Yeshua, is just one of many teachers of Christ's knowledge and wisdom. Okay. This image here is from Egypt. It's from the, uh, the Coptic Museum. Okay. This is from the Coptic Museum. This is a very, very old image of Yeshua, not Asus, not Hail Zeus, but Yeshua. Okay. Uh, giving a lesson and talking to people, possibly his disciples on the right and and uh, and possibly uh, people that he's speaking to on the left, right, or, or vice versa, depending on which angle you're looking at this. However, what's interesting is this man did teach some amazing things and he learned some amazing things. When he disappeared out of the Bible at the age of 12, he went to Egypt. OK, that's where he went. He went to Egypt. This is where he went. This is where he lived right here in, in this room. You're looking at the actual room, which is now a shrine. Anyone going to Egypt with me this October, I will be taking you here. I think we have 65 or 70 people coming with me and we'll be taking pictures in here. If you look on that back wall, you can see Yeshua underneath the candle there. This is a shrine now. He actually lived, slept, ate in this area right here, which has now been turned into a Coptic church. They built up on the around. It used to be like considered like a it was like a cave here. It was like a, 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 a sheltered a, a cave made into a shelter. Now it's an actual um, Coptic church. And you can come in the front door and walk down to this crypt that's there as a as a um, uh, you know, pres as being preserved. In, re in recognition or, re or memory of Yeshua. Um, his mother was here as well, Mary, right? What did he do here? He came here to learn the Egyptian mysteries. From who? Thoth. Thoth, the Atlantean priest king who ruled over the land of Kem for 14,000 years. That's not Billy telling you this. That's the Egyptian hieroglyphs telling you this. It's not all coming off the top of my head. That's the Egyptian hieroglyphs telling you this. The language of light. And so then he leaves out of here as he gets a little bit older and he goes on a journey to Tibet, which has been confirmed by the Dalai Lama. I had a whole video about this with uh, Robert Grant. He went to Tibet. Well account, well known account of him in Tibet, learning Reiki healing, Qigong, healing with the hands, energy moving through the body, meditation, all of that. After he became a master of that. He headed down into India where he learned the mystic arts and reincarnation. And then he taught reincarnation all the way back down into Egypt. Then the Bible picks up and says, I call when he's 32, I call my son out of Egypt. That's where the Bible picks up. I call my son out of Egypt. And so then he, he returns to Jerusalem coming in on the back of a donkey, right? That's where it picks up. That's the next scene. So, but this exists. And this is a well-known account. The, the records are clear. The evidence is clear. This is where he actually lived and walked and lived among people every single day as the boy grew into a man, not a God. We are all God. And he tried to tell you all that. He tried to tell you, ye are gods. We are all God walking in the flesh. We're a fractal of the universal consciousness that that is the energy that creates this entire universe. Every single one of us is God. So anyway, this is where Yeshua actually lived. And so what does this come down to? Time walks through men, but God's walk through time. By Compendium of the Emerald Tablets by Billy Carson.